Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to take a look at Clint Eastwood's newest film, The Mule. We're going to talk about the characters, the pace, and the story. This is episode 103 of The Realist Podcast. Hello listeners and welcome. I'm Donnie. And I'm Oscar. And we have our producer Ruben here. As always, Ruben says hi. Uh, We want to thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode. It's going to be a very special episode because every episode is very special. That's true. Gotcha. (laughs) Thought that was an exclusive interview. (laughs) Oh, that's another episode. (laughs) But this one we're going to talk about um, Clint Eastwood's newest film, The Mule. But before we get into that, just a couple of quick reminders. When a guy, uh, uh, la, 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 la. sorry. <laughs> you want to sing? Trying. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> um, just remember, guys, we are on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Team Realist. Uh, I don't need to spell it for you at this point. We're 103 episodes in. Okay, I'll spell it for you one more time. Why not? Team R double E L I S T S no dash. Uh, we're also on YouTube and we're also on iTunes. If you'd like to leave us a comment and rate us, uh, we're always appreciative of any feedback you guys could give us. So, yeah, jump on there and you know, leave us a comment, write to us, tell us what you're feeling, what you're thinking about our podcast. Um, this is going to be a spoiler discussion, so if you have not seen this movie yet, you know what to do download the episode, press pause, go watch the movie, come back and listen to it again. Yeah. That's pretty much it. And I think we can just jump right into this episode. Um, Oscar and I saw this film last night. I was like, what, what was the lead into that? We saw this movie. So we're going to talk about it. Yeah. No, no, no. We saw it last night. So it's still pretty fresh in our brains. Uh, Oscar, you, you can start us off with some quick thoughts. What did you think of The Mule? Uh, I thought it was the worst movie of 28. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, no. no be, be real. Did you? Did you? <laughs> um no, what are you talking about? Clint Eastwood didn't pay us for this episode. No, so this actually was a a very interesting movie, I will say. Um, it just it was one of those things where you appreciate the story that's being told. Uh, doesn't necessarily do anything that puts it over the top that you know makes you really think about this movie long term. Uh, it was just a very interesting story to watch, and I, I think really what gets you is the character that Clint Eastwood plays in this movie his character and his story arc Um, I think that really is just the the hook of this movie um, because there's really not too much really to it it's very simple it's like simple to the point where you you easily can follow along what's happening um, and you you should not get lost you should not be confused about anything no question should really arise uh, because they, they really they say it. it's one of those movies where they tell you what the plot is like as the movie progresses um but yeah no i, I really just found it interesting i i don't want to say it's a bad film it's not a bad film it it is one that i i will say probably might be forgettable uh in their in the years to come because there's just nothing that really defined this movie that that will stick to you uh it was just like i want i want to just put it in the, in the way of it's like someone telling you a story, and I, I don't know if this is even a true story from a movie. Is it an inspired true story? It is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Of course. No surprise. Um, that should be a twist in a movie. This is not a true inspired by a true story. But no, so it's like it's like if, if someone had just told you the story. If like if I had just said, hey, Donnie, so I read in the news that there was this uh, 90-year-old man who you know was doing drug – you know was a mule for a drug cartel, and he got caught, and he's going to prison. And you'd be like, okay. Like, yeah, that's man. exactly what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, all right. Man, that sucks for him. But then again, he's only 90, so it's not like, you know, like it. it there's I not, think the. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. There's just, just, there's, there's not too much weight. There's not too much uh, that this movie delivers. And that's okay. But it was still a solid movie to just watch on the screen. Absolutely. Um, Before I give you my quick thoughts, uh, let me just read the synopsis. Broke alone and facing foreclosure on his business, a 90-year-old horticulturist, Earl Stone, takes a job as a drug courier for a Mexican cartel. His immediate success leads to easy money and a large shipment that soon draws the attention of hard-charging DEA agent Colin Bates. 
When Earl's past mistakes start to weigh heavily on his conscience, he must decide whether to right those wrongs before law enforcement and cartel thugs catch up to him. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, some of the things you said, Oscar, I do agree with. I do. I did like the film. It was an interesting story just to watch unfold and just to see how, I mean, obviously the protagonist is Clint Eastwood's character, Earl. Mm -hmm. So we see him, we see him go from like caring for these flowers that he spends, that he spent a lot of his time and devoted a lot of his, his, uh, his life to, to him smuggling he, like record breaking amounts of illegal drugs for the Mexican cartel. So I think if you heard that, you would just want to know, well, how did that happen? How did that unfold? Like, how did he get into that? How does this 90 year old nice, you know, flower planting guy turn into like the best mule for the Mexican cartel? So definitely interesting premise. Um, and I think, I think most people are going to, I would say that most people, if you should watch this film, if you just want to watch a story unfold and just kind of see how it came to be, it is based on a true story. Um, it was a 90 year old mule, a 90 year old man, World War II veteran. He was a mule, he was a mule for the Mexican cartel. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you know, they just took that and just made a movie about it pretty much. Um, and that, and that's something that would get my attention. Uh, and I would just want to know how, it, you know, like how to, I'd want to, I'd want to know the details. Right. So I think people, if you want to, uh, at least what they're going to walk away from is just like the nuances of this film, like just the details of how it happened. There wasn't any humongous like climax to the scene. It wasn't like, I mean, you know, there, there's so many different scenes about the Mexican cartel and drug cartels. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite ones about in that kind of realm is end of watch, which I think is a brilliant film. Five out of five for me. Um, no need to do a real rewind on that baby because I love that film. Well, thanks for making that not happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know, we weren't going to do it anyway. You never know. Um, so, uh, it was great, but you know, and that, that had a lot, of, that had a lot of just, uh, hustle and bustle and a lot of, uh, fast pacedness and, and, and built up to something really, really humongous, I feel like. <laughs> um, but in this film, it was, everything was pretty toned, everything pretty toned down. It was just a lot of it was, you know, the pacing of it was a little on the slower side because a lot of it, we were, we were watching him make these runs and, and. He was telling, you know, Clint Eastwood as a director was telling us, oh, this is the, the this is his fifth run. This is his seventh run. This is his ninth run. You know, probably by like the seventh, eighth run, I was like, OK, I, I get it. He, you're making a lot of runs. What's next? Did right. you ever feel like that? Did you feel like the pacing was kind of getting a little too slow, a little too laxed? Yes. I, I, and I for, <laughs> and for a second, I thought I was not seeing like all the numbers i didn't realize that they, that they were skipping intentionally <laughs> for a second i was like did i miss like the other runs did i miss this right did, did I, I miss the sixth run? <laughs> exactly so it took a it took a quick second for me to be like okay they're just skipping to like specific reasons why these runs are being showcased uh, but i will say yes because it, it became more of like you you just knew the more he did the deeper he was getting into this so it was just that mm -hmm. very simple like okay, now he's doing this for so long that if he wants to get out, they're not going to let him. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, it was. It was It was getting to the expectation of you're just getting yourself deeper and deeper the more runs you keep doing. Absolutely. And I – that was – I think that's always – at least for me as a movie watcher, anytime there's a movie about the Mexican cartel, it's always – the Mexican cartel is usually depicted the same in every kind of crime movie. Like – they're not to be messed with. They're like ruthless. They're relentless. Like they'll they'll cut your grandmother's head off. You don't mess with. You mess up one time. That's one time too many. That'll end your life. Kind of you know deal. Um, I, I'm assuming it's true. I, I don't right. know, <laughs> and I don't ever want to know. Right. Exactly. Uh, but despite the pay, despite the pay, <laughs> that's another conversation we'll have. But um, but yeah. So I, um, where was I going with that? Oh, so I was just saying they're depicted like that the same kind of the same throughout all these other films. Um, so it was the same with this film. I, I knew that he was going to he was going to just keep going. I mean, we kind of get that from the trailer. It looks like he gets a little too deep into it. But 
you know, he, he just kept doing it. I mean, it was great money, you know, and it was easy. It was so easy. All you had to do was drive. And like he said, he had no tickets. He had no priors. He was like a clean driving record. The most, the, le- the least unsuspecting person you would ever think would be driving drugs for the Mexican cartel. Yeah. So he was perfect for the job. Um, and but you just know that the cartel he's going to do such a good job the cartel is going to take notice and really and he's going to be doing such a good job they're not going to let him they're not going to want to let him go he kind of had an like the first time he did it he had an out like he he didn't have to do it after that probably even the second and third time you know he there was they were like just let us know when you want more work man gringo you know whatever and he was just like oh you know i don't think he intentionally wanted to keep doing it it's just every time he returned back to his reality there was always something else that could be, you know, bought or paid for yeah, or, fi- or financially yeah. helped with. So he just kept doing it. Um, so then we get to a point in the film where the head honcho of the cartel who lives in Mexico uh, takes notice to him and he flies him out. And from that point in, I was like, that's it. It's he's too far in like that. The head boss is taking is like flying you to his home and. And congratulating you personally, like that's you're you're in too deep, and that was right. like that's when I I started getting a little scared for him, um, so that was like you know unfortunate. I, I, I never got concerned for this character. Um, it never got to the point where I was just fearing that he wasn't going to make it out alive. And to be honest, I don't know if because I I was just like this is he's a star of the movie, so. Like, like, like they're not gonna kill him <laughs> in, like fifty minutes in. Soon. It'd be, I mean, it would be very awesome if they did something like that. We were just completely surprised by how whatever third act is gonna be. But no, I, I never felt scared for him. I was just more of like, how do you get yourself out of it? And and this character was just really interesting. And I don't know if Clint Eastwood was going for this, but he really was delivering a perfect grandpa that mm-hmm. is just like just going through the motions and talking as you know he would even if he wasn't during this Mm -hmm. uh deliveries and and it was just like very interesting to to just watch his character and he was a very very kind hearted character he just put work first before his family uh so it was just like one of those where you just were like you sympathized with him and you just wanted to see how he gets through and just when he was doing the deliveries i felt like he was like being smart I don't know, in the sense, because, like, at first I was just like, oh, he's just doing whatever he wants to do. But then I kept noticing, like, he, he would think of, like, what to say and or, like, get away with stuff uh, immediately. Like, it wasn't like he's just like, oh, no, I don't know what's going, what's going on. He was just more of like, yeah, I'm do- yeah, these are my friends. Or, like, when he when they had that cop interaction, he was, he, like, he was quick on his feet. So he was a very smart character. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just fascinating to just see him go through this. Uh, and I was just more of like, he's an, I was hoping he was going to have a clever way out. Like I'm hoping he was going to, this entire time he was actually sabotaging, you know, the, one of the, the cartel members or something like, I thought he was going to do something like that and over the top. Uh, but no, it was, it was sadly, that's not the case, but that's, he was just a very fascinating character. And that's why I really say he, he makes this movie watchable. Mm-hmm. Because you're just like, you just see a grandpa, and you pop. Maybe to some people, you think of your own grandpa. Like, I can't can imagine my grandpa doing this right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think he was definitely one of like the driving force for this film. Like his character Earl, um, and whether he whether he deliberately portrayed him like that or not, very kind of easy breezy. Um, didn't take thing. I mean, not that he didn't take things too seriously, but it wasn't, you know, all the other people are like, you need to stay focused. You need to get, you know, get, get to your drops on time, blah, blah, blah. And he, you know, he'll pull over and along the way while driving all these drugs in his trunk, like help someone, you know, change their tire, exactly, yeah. stop and get a bite to eat. And it did come off very kind of off. Like if you know some people around that age, it does seem like you know. Let me let me watch what I say here because I'm not trying to generalize people. Here. <laughs> what are you going? I for? I know some some older folks, and I work at a facility where I work with a lot of the elderly community. So I the some of his traits and characteristics that he had, I see in those in some of the the people at my facility. 
very like you know the even the way he talked and the way he'll just the way he opened up to random strangers are just about things that are going on and he's just are just trying to share advice with like the youngsters exactly it seemed very uh paternal um but yeah i I absolutely agree i thought he was a really interesting character really made the film um more more intriguing and more enjoyable to watch and specifically to watch his performance i think he did a really good job with the character um and, and I think the rest of the cast was it was pretty good as well. Um, so we had, first of all, one of the biggest things I had no idea the woman who played his daughter is his actual daughter in real life, oh. uh, Allison Eastwood. Dun so she, dun dun. Yeah, that was like really nice. I had, I, and you know, it's weird because I was like, I feel like I should know her from another movie or something. I don't know. Like, I was like, why? I don't know. It just seemed like I felt like I was supposed to know who she was. But then I was like, but I can't recall like any other film she's done. But then I don't know. It was just interesting. But I'm yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, so we had her. We had uh, Taysa Farmiga play his granddaughter. We had Bradley Cooper play one of the DEA agents. Uh, Michael Pena playing another. Or I don't know. Remember the FBI or DEA? Yeah, another DEA. Another DEA agent. Diane Weiss playing his wife. Lawrence Fishburne playing like the head. DEA guy. Yep. Um, and then Andy Garcia playing the the head honcho in the Mexican cartel, along with some other really good actors. So it was a really good cast. Um, I, I will say the cast, nothing wrong with the, the casting in the movie, but why why bring the, the all-star power when you're not giving them much to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I understand... Business wise, if you see a movie that has Bradley Cooper in it, that might pique your interest a little bit more than if it didn't. I get the that for it, but take advantage of that. Like if you have these actors that have been proven, use that to the full effect. And I feel like we got just a very like cut dry character. He's this Bradley Cooper is playing a DA, a DA trying to stop this, but there's like no. Like arc of like oh he's going through something himself or anything. It's just kind of one sided. Yeah, a lot of the characters, so, some of the characters were just kind of one sided, and I think if you have a one sided character, you don't necessarily need to bring on an A list actor to play them. Right. You so know, yeah, and that's you, that's the disappointing part is that they didn't use them to the full advantage. Yeah. That they I mean, even Michael Pena, like very very minimal. I, I think he was, part I think the, story. He was the, the tech of the team. Which he he's played like that before, like the techie kind of guy. So it's like... But there was, again, there, yeah, I, I can't tell you what if he was going through anything because he just, every time he was on screen, he was to move the plot forward of like, oh, we, we have we have vision or we have audio. Of, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% agree with you. I think, uh, I mean, I, I, by no means am I disappointed to see them in the film. Always a pleasure to see them, uh, but it it wasn't necessary. Exactly. But you know, could have it, it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it was pretty good. I mean, you know, I I did like I did like to see them all. I think they all worked well together, and uh, it was, you know, good cast. I hadn't seen Lawrence Fishburne in anything in a long time. Not that I like follow his films like that. <laughs> I mean, maybe he had a film out last year, and I just don't know about it. But um, it was yeah. It was, he was in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Shut up. He was. Dang it. <laughs> Ruben edited that out. <laughs> well, there you go. Once again, no, he had a he had a good role. He had a a, a role actually in that film. Um All right, Oscar, well, did you have any like standout moments from this film? Any scenes that you particularly liked? Um I, I will I I want to say not particular. I didn't have anything that that like stood not out. Really, but no, but like all his interactions, like his first time interactions with different characters, were very interesting because he would just say what came to his mind. Like and and like and when he met the uh, the black couple with the car uh, tire popped, uh, that was a very interesting interaction. When he first met the cartel uh, inside the thing, inside the uh, warehouse or the gas station, I guess is where they were located. Uh, he was he was not scared, but he was just like commun- trying to communicate with them. And then he was asking, "How does the, how does text messaging work? What do I do?" Uh, it was just very interesting the way he was interacting with the other characters. When he was at the diner with Bradley Cooper, and he was uh, just naturally giving them the advice of, "Hey, work should not come first. You know, don't miss your anniversaries, things like that." It was just very interesting. Um, interactions that he had with other characters that were 
the part of the overall enjoyment. But like, yeah, I mean, if I had a particular point out a particular scene that I would say was a highlight was when he was being followed intentionally and they let him know he was following, but he was singing to like songs and then the, the people following him started to sing the song too. Yeah. That was a very funny moment. Um, I was, I would say that if anything, that is a funny moment because it's just, it's what I would naturally think of. If like, if you're following someone, you have to listen to what they're, they're doing and then they're playing music. Like, how do you not just happen to listen to the song and start singing it too? Right. So yeah, if anything, that's one, but overall the interactions. I, I forgot to say, I want to, I wanted to ask you about before we went into this part, but I wanted to ask you about the ending um, because how the movie ended, spoiler alert, was basically he did end up getting caught. Uh, by Bradley Cooper, Michael Pena, all those guys. Uh, And he pled guilty to his charges. The lawyer was trying to fight for him and say they took advantage of him, of his kindness and his kind nature, and he's an older gentleman and this and that. Probably would have got away with it. He probably could have possibly gotten a very lenient sentence at the most, Um, if not gotten away with it or been acquitted altogether. But he... uh, he pled guilty. He just stood up and said guilty. Um, so then cut to the final scene after he said goodbye to his daughter, who he's finally like made amends with, made amends with his daughter and, you know, said bye to his wife before she passed and this and that. And then he was in the prison, probably going to spend the rest of his life there um, planting flowers. And he seemed there seemed like a con- like he was content with it. Like there was like, don't feel sorry. You know, like it is what it, like I did this. I'm here now and I'm going to plant continue to put my focus on my flowers kind of i don't know that's the vibe i got from the ending the one thing that i i since it is inspired by a true story i would would have preferred they have explained why he made that choice i I don't think i'm questioning his choice at all i'm just curious as to why he felt that was the better path rather than continue his his improving relationship with his daughter and, and being with the family which the whole point of the movie was realizing that work doesn't need to come first uh, and family does, and he and he and we get to the point where he intentionally goes to spend see his wife for the last few was it days with her mm-hmm. uh, instead of finishing off the the delivery, which was getting the cartel very upset because there was no delivery for uh, about what was it two weeks a few weeks yeah, a week or so or something like that. Um, so that in itself, like the character realized family is important and it comes first. But yet you make that choice to be away from the family. So that's why I just wanted to know: was it one of you just accepting? I did a crime. I should do my time. Was that just the you know you seeing the the way the justice system works, or was there something else to it? So it would have been nice if they did explain that, just to give us uh, a a closure for the character. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I don't I don't disagree with his choice. That's the thing though. It's like I'm not judging. Like you, yeah, you made the wrong choice, but because sometimes I that, I feel I'm I can't think of the the film I'm thinking of right now. But there was another film where it's same thing, and I, this has been portrayed in a couple different films where it's like they're at, at, towards the end and the the lawyers doing everything they can and then they they stand up and they're like i'm guilty your honor and the lawyer's like wait no what are you doing and the, oh you, you mean know, riverdale and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly right that's a, like a prime example uh, no your honor i'm guilty I'll, I'll accept the you know i accept the charge i'm guilty um so it's like you know if he's sometimes that sometimes it doesn't sometimes i'm like no you're not guilty you know um you still have so much life to live or or you didn't really mean to do it or don't do this you could get away with it this film was different like i don't know why maybe because i i I couldn't tell you maybe he was already so old like he didn't have much time left um maybe because he was guilty because he did do it it's not like i I don't she, she the lawyer tried to make a point that they took advantage of his kind nature and for sure at first i think he was a little he didn't know what he was delivering but if you're driving your truck into a garage with like tattooed gang looking dudes with guns, um, you know, it's and they're looking pretty like paranoid themselves. You know, it's something not probably not legal. And if they're telling you not to look in the bag and they're giving you a phone that's telling you to throw it, you know, like you're not that naive to the fact that you're doing something. It's not like you know you're doing It's not like you don't know you're doing something illegal. Right. Oh, sorry, was my point. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with it because I feel like he was okay with it, and I said that it would just been nice to know that why that he made that process. decision. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of, would have been nice to know. I also would have liked to have known what happened to the delivery, 
that because the, the, they didn't show. Oh right, them nice. seizing it. They didn't right. show them taking it out of his truck. Which they. Had I assume to, that they did because he got because convicted. You know, yeah. Right, but they didn't. I wish they would have showed that. Um, I wish we would have known what happened to this other character who was kind of like babysitting him, quote unquote, babysitting him on one of the yes. deliveries halfway through the film. He didn't like him at first. They didn't like each other, but then it kind of seemed like. They warmed up. They warmed up to one well, another. He warmed up to, to Earl. Earl, Earl yeah. was just like, whatever. <laughs> and, but Earl tried to give him some advice about you should do what you love and don't. Right. These guys don't care about you right before his friend got killed. Um, so I would have liked to have known what happened to that guy because, I mean, I, I assume, unfortunately, I think he probably died. Wouldn't be surprised, yeah. But there, there are a couple little things I, I would have liked to have seen, I guess, that, that they could have wrapped up, tied some loose ends. But, you know, not every film is going to answer every single question for the audience so that's fine um just like morales <laughs> that was episode 102 <laughs> if you haven't listened to it check it out um but one of my favorite scenes was i don't know if i had a favorite scene, <laughs> right it didn't sound like it if you if your first thought was nothing, nothing's really coming to mind. <laughs> I liked. I really felt like it was endearing when he was spending the time with his wife while she was passing. That was yeah. like, uh, you know, an endearing moment. I, I oh that quote that one well, not quote that statement he says. What do you say? Uh, what well, she says? Do you uh, do you love me? Oh. And he was just like not as much. Oh, what was it? More than, More than yesterday, yesterday. Not as much as tomorrow. Yeah. That was a. I was like, that was a, that was yeah. a good one. That was a good one. I gotta write I that agree. down. Yeah. <laughs> Let this movie pass for a Did few you hear years. That? Did you hear that? Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, but yeah, probably that whole scene. Although that also, I was at my kind of most anxious because he looked at his phone and he had like fifty three missed calls and ninety six text messages, and all, you knew the cartel was everyone was looking for him. So I was like, dang, they're gonna kill. Me. But it was surprising that they didn't have a way to know where he was at. Like, you wouldn't you think they could just like, like I, I, GPS I would, located well, or... that or I would have felt like, I mean, what, cause they gave him the phone. So it wasn't like it was a, uh, you know, this personal cell. Yeah. And, and at the same time, if this was a big delivery, I just feel like they would have had someone following. They would have had eyes on it the whole time. Yeah. I mean, they made the claim that they always do. And yet they, right. They said they have eyes everywhere. So why didn't they have eyes on that? I don't know. There was another point you, you brought up that I wanted to say, but. I can't remember. Oh, there, you said yesterday that you liked that um, at the end when they did bust him, that Bradley Cooper wasn't mean to him. Right. His character, his DEA When he realized it agent. was him, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't mean. He didn't say anything snarky or, you know, anything. It, it still seemed like he – it kind of seemed like he had this empathy for him even when he was speaking to him. And he was like um, – you know, when he was – even when Earl was in cuffs and in the back of the police car and he was like, you know um, – asking him about his daughter and he was like i'm glad you you know were able to make amends and things like that it seemed like he was uh like it could have easily gone to the point with like you sneaky little beep yeah but it thought didn't. you can get away with me you, you freaking beep oh like it could have <laughs> like it could have gone that route like it could have. that's what you were waiting for no i'm no. just saying like the the very common route of that is just like yeah like, like, like anger and frustration yeah, upset that you know he, it was him the entire time, and he was causing all this stress and work to be done, mm-hmm. and he was just living his little beep life. <laughs> just keep on with the beeps. Beep this, beep that, <laughs> beep you. No, I got you, I got you. But yeah, I, I even that little exchange was uh, was nice too. So you know, it had this moment had like little nice moments. Yes. Um. So with all that being said, Oscar, what do you give this film? Uh, Final roll score. It is going to be a a three out of five. Okay. Um, and I and I will say Clint Eastwood's performance. Uh, I don't know if it was the best out of all of him because that's what some of the people that have seen the movie were reviewing it as, like his best performance. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was a really good performance for Earl. Uh, the just the character that was just very interesting. I mean, like there was nothing like over the top that there was like nothing big that that he did that he delivered. You know, there was no big monologue. There was no big you know, intense moment that he got out of. It was all very in a calm tone, mm-hmm. but yet you were very interested in watching Earl go through all of this and feel like that was a, a excellent thing to do. And I mean, obviously he directed it, so he directed it in the best way that kept the interest there. Uh, but yeah, everything else was just very, very short leash in that they didn't go 
any risk. They didn't challenge anything. They didn't do anything. Uh, the pacing, therefore, starts to become a factor and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a definitely a solid three out of five. Okay. I agree. Um, I'm going to give it the same thing, three out of five. And it's one of those films that I'm glad I watched it. It was interesting while I was watching it. I wouldn't necessarily... I don't feel like I need to watch it again. I don't think there's anything else I would gain from it. Um, right. I, I, I saw the story and I saw how things unfolded. Uh, and it was nice. And it was in, I was engaged and intrigued by Earl, specifically his character. And even with the the contrast of like the you know the people working against him and seeing you know the DEA agents running around trying to bust them and like that was interesting too and it, um you know it it was entertaining but yeah I I definitely I I will say I feel like the trailer I got I maybe I just got so 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 excited when I first saw the trailer and it, it looked like well because it gave you an intense scene it gave it looked the the intensity was like the drama was going to be this really really big you know and yeah. and the um i mean the whole tra- the, the trailer one of those one of those instances where the trailer just really really sells it and then the movie not saying the movie doesn't deliver but it just the trailer maybe oversold it maybe overshot it a bit maybe it wasn't the best scene to showcase yeah Yeah, and you know it's clint eastwood and you see all these actors so you think it's i was just like oh my god this is gonna be amazing um it was a good film it was a good film hands down like respect i i respect clint eastwood as a director as an actor as a filmmaker he is amazing has made a huge mark in the industry and is a legacy in his own right um but i would I think he had he's done better work you know not every every project you do can like you can't hit it out of the park every single time um don't ask ryan cooper that (laughs) (laughs) uh so but yeah i'm gonna give it a three out of five as well okay for sure i will say i understand why it was snubbed for any uh any awards yeah i I was surprised at first because i was like wow like nothing like clint eastwood you're gonna leave him out but it no i mean but it just don't laugh it just it wasn't the best I mean, there we there we there we had great films from this year. Like, it's just I was gonna say it was an amazing year for film, but then, like, there's always it's always an amazing year for film. Like, that's why they have awards award ceremonies to honor the great films of the year. Uh, well, <laughs> you know the politics. Well, of yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. We, I might we might have to do a conversation on that at some point. But anyways, thank you listeners. Uh definitely let us know what you guys thought of The Mule. If you thought it was one of Clint Eastwood's best projects or if you thought it fell a little flat, um just share your thoughts. Remember, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and you can also leave us comments on YouTube. You can leave us a comment on iTunes and you can rate us on iTunes as well if you're feeling a little uh, extra motivated and want to <laughs> let us know how we're doing there. Yes, please. We we appreciate it. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for listening and we will catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you.